Hi, I'm Pastor Bob, and uh, you're welcome to our home. This is Lynn, my wife, and this is our loyal companion, Rizzo. And uh, Rizzo was named after the first baseman for the Cubs. And uh, I wanted to give the first part of my talk to the kids and to uh, the young at heart. Uh, and I wanted to point out that uh, we are sequestered like everybody else, and uh, being sequestered is not easy. Uh, but we have a little guy here who has helped us a lot uh, through that, and this is Rizzo, and uh, he helps us by getting us out to exercise because he has to get out and walk at least three or four times a day. Uh, he also cheers us. He does funny things. Uh, he is a loving companion. As you can tell, he's snuggling with Lynn here. And uh, you may have ways uh, that you also find to make your sequester or staying at home a little bit easier. And uh, I have seen around the neighborhood where kids are doing things in chalk and they're sending greetings to people. I've heard kids gathering together, of course, six foot apart, uh, singing songs. And, uh, you know, some of the kids are supporting their families by doing household chores, homeschooling, and uh, making the best of their time. So I want to tell you how much I appreciate that. And I'm going to teach you a little sign. And uh, first of all, I'll do the sign and then I'll tell you what it means. Jesus loves me. This I know. And God loves you. Jesus loves you very much. And so remember that you're not alone. That you and your family walk together with Christ. Amen. So today, I want to uh, kind of reminisce a little bit about what's going on with the pandemic. The pandemic is something that I've been told by many people is greater than the struggles that we had during World War II. Not to minimize that, but this is a struggle against an enemy that you can't see. And what it has caused us to have to do is to isolate ourselves because the current instruction is that we don't know how large this pandemic can go, but I know thousands have died and it goes contradictory to the way we like to live our lives. I don't know about you, but I love to give handshakes. I love to hug. I love to be in crowds of people that I know and love, even some people that I don't know. And uh, I love to be there. We are separated in uh, absolutely horrible ways by not being able to worship together, by people not being able to go to funerals of their own loved ones, people who are taken out of school, out of their jobs. Some people are struggling because they don't know how they're going to make their next house payment. There are businesses that we love that are having to close temporarily. Uh, for instance, the restaurant business is struggling, hotels are struggling, and we have cruise ships where you're going there to relax and have fun that are sequestered at sea. And so what is the spiritual response to all of this? How do we handle it? And one of the scriptures that's appointed for today says, from Isaiah 50, I set my face like a flint to do his will. I know I will triumph for the Lord is by my side. And that's a good scripture to keep in mind, to understand that we are not alone. We are separated and we don't want to be separated. Now we have the uh, advantage of having internet, of having Zoom and Skype, but uh, we know that even though we're separate, we in our faith have the bonds of worship through baptism, through communion, uh, even worshiping online. And these are things that bind us together. Now I know that not in all circumstances can we 
share communion together. We can't do that. And uh, we can remember our baptism. And we can look at this time and turn it around as we set our face as an opportunity to reboot ourselves. And that means that we look at the things that we've been doing and keeping that fast pace, going from one thing to another, spending our time on our cell phones, on our computers, and doing our work loyally and diligently and going from meeting to meeting in some cases, or the soccer moms taking their kids all over town, and uh, also kids being school, uh, schooled at home now. All of those are impositions on our time. But we have a chance also with extra time to be able to catch up on things that were left astray. And one of those things might be getting in touch with our own spirituality again, getting in touch with prayer, taking care of our families in ways that we couldn't before, and spending time with uh, our friends, even on the phone, knowing that there are people out there who are hungry, responding to them, and taking care of our neighbor. And that's another one of our lessons uh, that is assigned for today. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But Jesus took that a step further, which makes it even more challenging. Love your neighbor as I have loved you. And that calls us beyond ourselves. It's not so much about America first. This is a pandemic. And that means this pandemic includes all the world. I've had an opportunity, and many of you have had opportunities to travel. And when you travel, you begin to discover that there are brothers and sisters out there in countries all over the world. These brothers and sisters of ours are dear. And we need to pray for them as well because they are suffering with us in this worldwide dilemma. And so it is important to listen to the words of Jesus when he says that we are to watch out after our brothers and sisters. And who are they? They're the ones that stand in our midst and some people we don't even know and we can't even see. So it's important for us to carry on in that respect. And I really appreciate the first responders and the nurses and the doctors who are sacrificing their health and their life and their families. I remember a picture that I saw this week in which a doctor came home because he wanted to see his family. He was sequestered because he didn't know if he had the virus or not or whether he would carry it to his family. His two-year-old son had his fingers on the front window of their house and the father was outside of the house touching his fingers to that window why so close and yet so far and a reporter who was in uh, China all of this time for 58 days and she came home finally to see her son her five-year-old son and they embraced and it was so heartwarming to see so during this time of struggle, I think it's very important to remember that we are not alone, that God has given us a history in our past that we can count on. We've been th brought through difficult times in our lives. Everybody else, everyone has sacrificed in various ways, has been through hard times, painful times, but God has seen us through. I was talking with a person the other day who said, I don't know why, Pastor, but I have been in a situation with this coronavirus in which I have strength beyond myself. I don't know where that comes from. I know I have a belief in God. And then we reminded ourselves that we are in preparation all of the time. When you and I worship on a regular basis, when we pray on a regular basis, when we do Bible study on a regular basis, we are establishing a platform of faith that when the big challenges come along in our lives, that we have a fortitude and a strength and an inner faith that we weren't even aware of in some cases that lifts us up on these those eagle wings. 
because we abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And so God is there for us, and God carries us through. And it's very important that when we meet great challenges in our life, that God transforms those challenges. We don't know how long this sequester is going to last. We don't know how long this coronavirus will be around. And it's really not important for us to be dwelling on some nebulous time span to say, okay, by Easter or okay, by the end of April or whatever. We don't know that. So it's a faith journey that we are on. And we are to take it step by step, day by day, knowing that God is with us. And I want to conclude with a reading from Hebrews, which is one of our assigned tests. Let us run the race with endurance which God has set before us. We do this keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. And that comes from Hebrews 12. And then finally, Romans 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God bless you on this spiritual journey.